Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sural Rawas. I am a consultant of internal medicine at Royal Hospital. I was asked to make a video in English uh, for our expat community who are of course equally affected by this global pandemic as we are. And um, in these times, facts are our friends and we all have to do our part. Um, so I am currently under quarantine. I have been exposed to COVID-19 um, through the community, not through the hospital, ironically. Um, however, it's important to note that um, COVID-19 now is in all communities. Um, this is a global pandemic. It aff it's affected planet Earth. And um, it's according to a lot of public health officials, it is not a matter of if, but when we all get exposed to COVID-19. So if there is any stigma about being exposed, it is very important to remove that immediately because being honest about our exposure is our only hope to then take the necessary precautions to protect others um, from also contracting um, this virus. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is quarantine and what that means. So who needs to be in quarantine? Either you have come out of, you have come from outside of the country, you've been traveling and you've arrived to Oman sometime in the last month, then you need to be in quarantine. So far it is 14 days. Um, if you, or if you've been in direct contact with a patient who has tested positive for COVID-19. So not any flu-like illness is COVID-19. Um, what does that mean? If you live alone, great, then you cannot leave your house. Um, your only contact with the outside world is through deliveries. Um, and it is your social responsibility to observe this very seriously. Um, and if you do live with other household members who do not have the same exposure as you, then your quarantine is in your room with your own bathroom. If you do have to share a bathroom with other people, then you have to take many extra measures where full decontamination, you have to fully try and sterilize or decontaminate any surfaces that you've touched in the bathroom um, after it's been used um, to try and avoid your family members also needing to go to quarantine. This means taking measures like um, bringing food to your room in a, a disposable utensils. This means when trash is being take, taken out of the room, this needs to be placed in another bag that is then sealed to be taken outside. Um, it is hard, but this is what we have to do in these difficult times. So what about if you have not been exposed to COVID-19? What is your responsibility? Or you've been exposed, but you completed your quarantine. Now you move to the phase of social isolation. What does social isolation mean? It means you have to always observe a distance of two to three meters between you and other people. Now, this does not apply to members of your household. So members of the same household who have all not been exposed, then they are in an isolation cell together. However, when anyone in this household needs to leave, they need to make sure they maintain a distance of two to three meters at all times between them and the rest and, and, and any, any other human being. Now, what is an imp another important point to note now, which is my last point, it's a note about masks and gloves. So there has been a misconception that wearing a mask, whether you're in quarantine or in social isolation, is somehow protective. So masks are only for people who have symptoms of, of an upper respiratory illness who might have been exposed, who might have been exposed to COVID-19. If you do not have symptoms, then wearing this mask is wasting a very important resource, which the medical community will need down the line. There has been a shortage of medical supplies. We've heard, in, even in places like Canada and the US, there's been talk about trying to reuse masks by healthcare workers. So you using the mask unnecessarily will take this away from someone who needs it later. There might even come a time where a call for anybody who has boxes of masks or gloves in their homes to donate those to the hospitals who might need them if it comes to that down the line. Um, so please, please, please do not unnecessarily use this equipment. Furthermore, if you are wearing gloves all day, you are not protecting yourself at all because COVID-19 lives on surfaces. So if you are touching these surfaces with your gloves and then touching your face, you are contaminating yourself just as badly as if you were not wearing gloves. So not wearing them, but being careful about washing your hands, being mindful about where your hands have been, doing things like washing your hands before you touch your phone, um, to make sure that your phone does not now become a contaminated surface are in fact the measures that will slow down the spread. So why is it important to slow down the spread? As we've seen in many other countries, the curve of cases initially starts off slow, just like it did in Oman so far. So we have just over 50 cases in Oman right now, and we are still on this sort of slow rise slope of the curve. However, the projections, if no social distancing is observed, is that in the next two weeks, there will be this peak 
of sudden rise of cases of COVID-19. The problem with that is that this becomes very overwhelming for the healthcare system. Even now, when there is already some data that there are effective treatments for COVID-19, this is not a treatment that someone can just take at home. A person who is hospitalized needs a team of medical personnel taking care of them. This is a resource that is very valuable. We have just over 5,000 beds in Oman, inpatient beds. If, according to the projections, we have 1,400 cases in a month, we have 5,000 cases in three months, this is already many orders of magnitude beyond the capacity of what the Oman healthcare system can handle. This is not only for the patients with COVID-19, but on any normal day, people would get sick for other reasons. So the mortality isn't only from those with COVID-19 who don't get the care they need, but also people who might happen to get sick for other reasons during this time in a very stressed healthcare system that now cannot deliver uh, what is needed to everyone. So by observing social isolation, we will do what is called flattening the curve. So if we manage to avoid this peak of cases where a sudden flood of cases comes to the hospital, if we manage to slow down the spread over time so the healthcare system can still manage, then we have hope of decreasing the mortalities even of confirmed cases. Um, and it really buys us time until a vaccine is available um, and until as a community we can hopefully come to a place uh, of a more normal life. I hope um, this is useful. Stay safe, um, be responsible, protect yourself, protect your loved ones. Um, this is a time where sticking together means staying apart. God bless.